My name is Thomas Miller. I'm a student at the Margaret Wilhelmine Gymnasium Bayreuth and I attend 12th grade. I'm happy to have the opportunity to present a school project at this Jade's Act Craft Conference. In our state of Bavaria, all students in 11th and 12th grade have to attend one science and one practice-orientated seminar. These seminars serve as preparation for studying at a university. At my school, there is the possibility to attend lectures at the University of Bayreuth instead of these seminars. In addition, a seminar paper has to be written at the university. I attended lectures of Professor Wassermann on World Wide Web Technologies, Programming and Design. In these, I learned HTML, CSS, JavaScript and JSX Graph. Here, I had the idea of choosing a hobby of mine, solving a Rubik's Cube, as the topic of my seminar paper. The focus of the paper was the combination of different web technologies. I started with research on solution algorithms for the classic 3x3x3 three by three by three Rubik's Cube. There is extensive literature on this topic. When selecting a suitable algorithm, I initially paid primary attention to ease of implementation in JavaScript and less attention to a solution with the shortest possible solution path. I agreed with my supervisors that not the algorithm, but the combination of different web technologies was in the foreground. Then I thought about how to store or represent the 3x3 cube in JavaScript. My first idea was to use a cube net, with the 54 visible color fields of the cube in a 9x12 matrix. However, this turned out to be unsuitable because the rotations are too difficult to implement here. Therefore, I decided to use a 3-dimensional 5x5x5 matrix, whose fields represent the colors of the cube. To be able to calculate more easily, I used a color coding. 0 means white, 1 means yellow, 2 means red, 3 means orange, 4 means blue, and 5 means green. A cube is represented in a matrix like this. I neglect the outer edges and corners of the matrix. Likewise, I do not need the 27 inner fields. Now I represent the colors of the cube in the inner fields of the outer sides of the matrix. This has the advantage that I can now realize rotations of the cube layers by simple matrix multiplications and matrix transpositions. I have implemented the basic operations in JavaScript function for this purpose. For example, the function to rotate the front layer by 90 degree clockwise looks like this. The 5x5 matrix is passed as a parameter. In the function, now two layers are rotated. The visible 9 fields at the front and the laterly adjacent fields in the second layer of the matrix. In this way, all possible operations are captured in functions. Now the solution algorithm can be implemented. I won't show this here because now the JSX for implementation is in the focus. I represent the cube in a JSX graph illustration as an axonometric projection. I indicate rotation steps by arrows. Here, for example, the front layer must be rotated 90 degrees clockwise. The user is thus presented with step-by-step -step instructions how to solve the cube. Now I had to think about a user-friendly input. The manual placement of a 5x5 matrix is not very user-friendly. In the lecture of Professor Wassermann, we also discussed the access to the camera via a website. So the idea came up. I could take a picture of the cube with the camera and read out the color values from the photo. To make this as user-friendly as possible, I decided that I would only process two photos of a cube to be able to capture all sides of the cube. For easier handling, I made a cube holder with my 3D printer. Capturing the sides of the cube should be done in good lighting conditions. In the next step, I used the taken photos as background of a Chase X graph board. In this board is the axonometric projection of a 3x3x3 Rubik's Cube. Now, 
I now manually align this with the edges of the photograph cube. Now I need to capture the colors of the cube. To do this, there is a measuring point in each small field of the chase x graph mesh. This is represented by a small circle. The draggable cube corner points of the net are provided with event listeners. As soon as the mesh is warped, I call the function recognized equal corners. This takes the coordinates of the center points of the small measurement circles and determines the respective color value at these points in the photo. The same is done with the second photo. Now I record the colors of the six middle fields on the cube. I compare the colors of an edge field with these six colors of the middle fields and determine the deviations of the color values. The edge field is assigned to the center field with the smallest deviation. In this way, all remaining border fields are assigned to a center field. The color circle takes the corresponding color. In the last step, the acquired cube is represented as a chase x graph illustration and the already described solution algorithm is executed. On rare occasions, the color detection may not work reliably. For example, if the lighting conditions were insufficient when taking the picture. For this case, I implemented a manual color correction. I have to submit the whole project in a written seminar paper until November 2023. After that, the website will be published on the JSX Graph site. The exciting thing about this project was the combination of different web technologies. I learned a lot about HTML, JavaScript and JSX Graph and hope you liked the project as well. Thanks for your attention. Okay, uh, in first point, I want to tell you how I created these uh, green nets I lay over the cube. Uh, for it, that, uh, I took photos of myself so I can show it better to you right now because it's kind of difficult to take photos of the cube on a laptop. So anyways, uh, I created uh, three functions. The first one is called Dritteln, which basically means to split something into three equally sized parts. And it has two points as parameters. And uh, first, it calculates difference on the x-axis and then on the y-axis. 
And then two additional points are created, which basically lie in between the points A and B, as you can see here. And these four points uh, will be returned. After that, I created a function which creates these uh, black measuring circles in the center of these, there is a measuring point. And as an input, I have uh, four points, which are the four outer points of this small field. And at first, I calculate the center points of the diagonals. And then I calculate the midpoint bet between the two diagonal midpoints. I do this because I found out that the midpoint between the diagonal midpoints is more central than the intersection point of the two diagonals, which is important because sometimes the photos are very small. So the measuring circle has to be exactly in the middle of the field. And in the end, I return this measuring point. And then I have the function called gitter, which basically means grid. And uh, the first thing I do here is create eight points, which are the eight points lying on the outer, uh, on the outer lines of this uh, large polygon. And after that, I have to, to uh, I have to create those four inner points uh, for all the nine fields to be created. And then I create the last four lines, which uh, split the large polygon into nine smaller fields. After that, I will create for a measuring point for each field. And these measuring points will be, then be returned. And there are uh, three of these uh, grids per photo. So I will call the function uh, three times per photo. OK, uh, the next next thing I want to talk about is this function I already talked about, uh, recognize equal colors, or in German, erkenne gleiche Farben, which basically takes uh, the image values from the canvas by uh, going can1.getImageData, get which is a, a function of a canvas. And it has four parameters as well, uh, the first two uh, being the coordinates. And I basically take the coordinates of the point in the JSX graph construction and multiply them by 600 and 800 because the canvas is 600 by 800 and the JSX graph board is only one by one. And then I have still to put in one and one because I only want one pixel. And I have to look up whether the point I'm currently looking at is in the first or in the second picture. So the code is basically twice there. After that, I store up all of the center points in an array. And then I have another for loop, which basically looks at each of these outer measuring points. And uh, calculates the absolute difference for the red, the blue, and the green value to each midpoint. And the one of the smallest, uh, the one of the largest difference is the only relevant, so I take the maximum. And if this maximum is, so to say, the smallest maximum yet, or the smallest maximum to all of the midpoints, I will take, uh, I will assume that uh, the outer point has the same color as the midpoint because there are only six colors, so it must belong to one center point, and that's probably the one with the smallest uh, deviation. And in the end, I adjust all these small measuring circles. For example, when I start dragging, as you can see, these uh, points take the color of my wall, and for example, here is the dark side of my face because of the thumb. And these points get dark as well, and some of them you can barely see anymore. Uh, yeah. Okay. And uh, finally, I want to talk about uh, how I can edit these points. Uh, for example, when I say this point, which is on my wall, uh, is not really gray, but it should be yellow. Uh, I can click this point, and then I get a color input from HTML, and I can basically just select yellow. And all the points, uh, all the outer points that were assigned to this inner point and this inner point will turn yellow. Uh, this can be used when, uh, for example, you take a photo in bad lighting conditions and the cube is 
Uh, the white face of the cube is displayed kind of gray. You can change it back to white. Or for example, when I want to say my hair is like a, a bright green, then all the points that were assigned to this center point will turn green as well. And there is another thing I can change, which is basically when I say, oh, this point there on the top uh, should be yellow as well. Then I can click it and four and six diff elements will appear. And I can basically just select what color I want uh, or what centerpiece I want the point uh, to be assigned to. For example, now it's assigned to a yellow, to the yellow centerpieces, to the three yellow centerpiece. And now it's assigned to the green or to the like dark blue centerpiece. And this is basically done by checking whether you click on a center point or an outer point. And uh, then the uh, it rather shows these six diff elements or the color input. And uh, every one of these uh, mesh points, I uh, measuring points, uh, which I talked about earlier, gets a JSX graph event listener to check whether this uh, point is clicked. And when it's clicked, the editing function is called with the point as an attribute. And you're able to edit the value of the point. Okay, uh, that's basically what I wanted to tell you. And if there are any questions, feel free to ask. Otherwise, thank you for your attention and have a great day.